Hi there, it's Phil here. This is a follow up to my original Magic Lantern YouTube video. So go and have a look at that if you haven't downloaded it and you are looking at installing that software. I cover how to do that in that video. Here I'm answering just a couple of questions that are regularly uh, coming up. So the first one is that um, people are asking how to remove the black box surrounds for your camera so I'll be covering that. There's also some questions regarding how to get rid of the focusing uh, box and other screen paraphernalia that normally comes up on the rear view of a Canon camera. And also we will be looking at the official alternative from Canon, the new webcam utility which enables you to connect your Canon via a USB cable and that works on back both Mac and PC. So stick around, have a look at it all and uh, there'll be a few tips and tricks throughout the video. I hope you enjoy. So you've got your Canon EOS camera, maybe an old one connected up via HDMI to your computer. You've got Magic Lantern installed and you've still got all of this screen clutter. We've got the focusing box around the middle, we've got data around the top and we've got the black borders around the edges. So I'm going to go through one by one as to how we can remove those things from your screen. So the first thing we need to do is reach around the back of the camera. There. So I'm going to reach around the back of the camera here and I'm going to go to the menu button. Now the menu button is not necessarily something that covers any of these things, but the menu button will firstly help us to clear the automatic power off problem that a lot of people seem to be having. So if I touch on the set button, we can see that if you've been using your Canon EOS for normal photography, it's quite possible that you've had it so that you can automatically turn the power off after two minutes, four minutes, something like that. Of course, that's what you would do to save the battery. Now, when you're trying to use it for a streaming, you don't want the camera to turn off. So what you do is you will click on the disable button. Typically, if you've had your camera turn off after 30 minutes, that setting here is the reason why. Of course, you need power into your camera and so you need to be looking for a dummy battery in order to provide it with permanent power while you are streaming. I'm now going to just click on the, um, the menu button one more time to clear that menu. This screen that you see is just the HDMI signal that Canon sends out along the uh, along the HDMI path before it can actually switch to the feed from the sensor. Now, what do we see from the sensor? Well, if we want to clear all of this screen clutter, it's quite easy. What we do is we go to the info button on the back. So I'll reach over and press the info button. And that will, if you might need to press it twice, but that will essentially clear all of that screen clutter so long as you've got Magic Lantern loaded on your camera. However, what we've still got is a black border going around the outsides. And this is causes quite a few people consternation. So it's very easy again to try to get rid of. Um, what I'm going to do to do that is to invoke the Magic Lantern menu. And what you should see is that the top and the bottom of this screen, the black borders around there, will actually expand and disappear. So to launch Magic Lantern, you double click the trash button on your camera. You probably click it once or twice. And watch the top and bottom of the black bars. So if I turn it straight off again, we can see that I've lost the top and bottom bars. So I've got the full resolution of the camera sensor or the live view screen. Now, your Canon camera is not necessarily naturally a 16 by 9 HD format. It is, it is this 4 by 3 format. So if you want to be 
um, beaming a, an HD proper 16 by 9 format ratio, you know you're going to have to lose the top and bottom of the image in order to move out those two far edges of the screen. Whilst you're live streaming, you may also want to make use of the autofocus function on the camera. And so long as your autofocus is turned on on the lens, you can half press the shutter button and it will autofocus for you. OK, good. Now, sometimes you might find that the focusing box comes up on the screen. Now, I can't actually get mine to do that right now. But if it does, what you need to do is press the set button around the back of the camera. That will then turn off that focusing box for you. Now, one of the tricks to getting the screen to fill out for a full HD screen is to use a setting in your streaming software. So my streaming software is Ecamm Live. And I'm going to bring you on to the what we call the live demo mode so that you can see the screen controls on the Mac. So we're in live demo mode now and within the screen controls we've got camera effects and we've got this zoom and pan functionality. So I can zoom the screen and you can see it moving as I go along to get it so that I can actually move away those two black bars. So essentially I've zoomed into the to the view. I do have the ability to move the uh, camera view up and down to suit as well. So once I've got that perfect, then I'm in a full 16 by 9 format. The resolution of the camera isn't exactly 16 by 9, so we're kind of zooming in a little, but it's the way that you would be doing it. If I come back and just remove that zoom functionality, so I double click on the button and it moves me back so that I've got the two edges, the two black edges here. I'm still recording in 16 by 9, but I've just got the black edges filling in the area that's not covered by the sensor. In Ecamm Live preferences, you can set your streaming size. So what we have is the stream size set to 1080p and Ecamm will let you film all the way up to 4K. But the stream shape here, you can govern that. So I could actually have a screen shape that matches exactly the resolution of my camera, in which case I would choose screen aspect. So I'll just switch straight out of demo mode now. Now, the next thing, of course, is that Canon have recently expanded their webcam utility. It used to only cover the brand new R series cameras, but now they've upgraded it to cover cameras even like this EOS 6D. So go to the Canon USA website because the Canon USA website has the most information about the webcam utility for your old camera. As I scroll through, you can see that it's supported by both Windows and Mac. And we can just get, scroll through. It says it supports up to 40 can, cameras now. Compatible with these applications, that's not a full list by any means now. And it does say that compatibility ends at Catalina at the moment. I don't know why they're not supporting Big Sur. Um, but anyway, that's just one of those things. And you can then go in and download. And this is the list of cameras that are supported. So you just select the camera. If you roll over it, it will allow you to click on it. And as far as I'm aware, the same webcam utility is available for uh, under any of those um, clickable links. So hopefully your camera is listed there. And it makes it very easy to connect your camera and get a direct feed into many of the applications. Hopefully that's useful for you. I, of course, in Big Sur, 
on the Mac use the Ecamm Live software and that gives me a perfectly good Canon connection through a USB cable or an HDMI cable, whichever one you want to choose. If you like this video, please subscribe or give it a like and I look forward to helping you in the near future.